Blue skies means fun days. Helping skydivers with tips and techniques about safety, training and fun jumping from those who know. Facebook is wonderful for some things. One thing I like doing is collecting images or mistakes so I can use them to show others what not to do. In this episode of Blue Skies Fun Days, we're going to have a look at the amazing three ring system. And you can have a go at working out where so many people have got it wrong. First off, let's look at what a three ring system looks like when it's correct. Each time you pass through a ring or loop, the load is reduced by a factor of 20, so I've been told. In experiments I did on my test rig, these numbers were close. In short, it worked out that for every G that we pull under canopy, the load on the cutaway cable goes up by about a pound a side. This is certainly a great reason for not letting the G-forces build up during a malfunction. Let's have a look at some of these pictures. I'll give you a few seconds to work out the challenge and then I'll give you the answer. And as we go through the images, I'd like you to think about what the outcome might have been if the misrigging error wasn't caught before exiting the plane. The final grommet, whose job is to keep the housing in place, has been missed. A half kilo or one pound bump of the housing at any stage could cause the riser to release. The small ring has been missed. A hard opening could see the Type 2A loop let go. The RSL snap has been put through the middle ring. In the event of a cutaway, the riser on this side would not release. One side correct, the other side has two rings going through the harness's big ring. Once again, a hard opening could see the Type 2A line fail due to 20 times the load being placed on the loop. Anywhere on the Type 2A loop material means that it should be replaced. Since the amount of internal wear or damage is unknown, it could possibly fail on opening, during turns, pulling out of a dive or flaring to land. This won't kill you in the short term, but an unpolished ferrule without its protector can wear against the reserve riser webbing, and this can cause the harness to be failed during a future inspection. And then there is the flip over. I find this is more common with tandem rigs due to the weight of the lines pulling down on the rings when the canopy is being laid out for packing. Under load, this generally hangs up. While it is easy to remedy on the ground, it's often impossible to do so in the air. You will find it hard to flick the flip over back by just trying to twist the riser back to where it's meant to be. Better to push down from the riser end and push the webbing where it is meant to be. Then it easily falls back into place. Remember to support this channel by subscribing, ringing the bell and telling your friends. Hopefully you have found this information about Three Rings informative. Now that you are aware, be sure to keep an eye open in the aircraft. Those around you may not have seen this episode of Blue Skies Fun Days and may have missed something. For more tips and techniques, click subscribe.